All right, ladies and gentlemen, friendly reminder, you do not have a vocab quiz this uh, tomorrow because there is no 21 through 30 on your vocab. So there is none, so you can't have one, so there is none. So please keep that in mind. Tomorrow is Tuesday. That is your last day before uh, the test. We will be doing a full lecture, of course. Uh, if you are going to do your extra credit, your extra credit is due on Wednesday at the latest. But you can, of course, bring tomorrow or... Some of you already had. Any type of hand soap, disinfectant, spray, wipe, tissues, I'll accept. I am pretty much wide open to anything that will help fight bacteria. Please keep in mind, I can only be here as long as there's no coronavirus, yes? So, I have been working on your AP plan so a complete moron can do what I do. You don't want a moron up here, can we agree? Because my girl can't show up until April 11th. Like my sub, who I hand selected, who's fantastic, who's gonna do a great job, yeah? She can't be here till April 11th. So if I have to leave, say, tomorrow, guess who you're gonna have? A clown. Can we agree? Look at the subs. Do you want the subs leading you through AP World? No. Yeah. Nor do I, frankly. So if you could, wipe your nose, cover your damn mouth, wash your damn hands! That's all I'm asking. So, because I can only be here as long as I can. So, ladies and gentlemen, on Friday we got to Berlin Airlift. We got to uh, construction of the Berlin Wall. Today uh, we also got to the beginning of China. We had Sun Yat-sen rise, and he wasn't a communist, but adopted communist policies because the people wanted it. Then he died. Jiang Jieshi came in, and he hated communists, so he sent all of the communists to China on a long march. And on that long march, who was there? Mao was there. Mao wrote a book called The Little Red Book. And eventually, Mao is going to rise into power. And who is removed from power? Jiang Jieshi. Jiang Jieshi goes to Thailand, uh, goes to Taiwan with all of China's money, and now China's broke. So, Mao is now in power. Mao is going to reach out to what country for assistance? Evelyn. The Russians. Who can raise your hand and tell me why are they so afraid and reach out to the Russians? Cade. There you go. U.S. containment, which said in the Truman Doctrine what, Cade? You're completely correct. There you go. United States says we will go to war with any country that declares communists after all of your aligned nations fall. With that being said, they form an alliance with the Soviets. Why did they pick the Soviets? It makes two reasons. This is where about where we left off, yes? Hello? Yes, okay. Why did they pick a relationship with the Soviets? Kevin, why? Brian, I'm so sorry. Well, correct me, darling. I'm so sorry, Brian. Brian, why? There you go. U.S. didn't want to go to Russia. If you didn't know that, write it down. What's the other major reason? Guys, who is the most powerful communist country in the world? Russia. So it makes sense. If you're a newly starting out communist country, you would probably want to reach out to the strongest communist country, yes? So if you don't know those two answers, I would write those two answers down. So they reach out because the Soviets and the United States, the United States doesn't want to fight with the Soviets. Second reason is, is the Soviets are the most powerful communist country, and as a newly communist country, they need the assistance. So, Beijing and Mo uh, Moscow are now working together, okay? And that is a huge problem. Now we're going to jump to Korea. So skip a space and center it. Korea is your next heading. So we're done with China for now. Don't worry. We'll be back. Things are not going to go well for now. Here we go. In Korea, Korea is going to divide on the 38th parallel. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, you do need to memorize the 38th parallel. Because where is Korea divided today, ladies and gentlemen? The 38th parallel. And now Korea has been fragmented into two parts. What are the two parts of Korea? Jared. North and South Korea, by the way. Oh my God, do we have problems with North Korea? Yeah, this weekend they sent three projectiles into the atmosphere. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing. So does that mean we have North Korea under control? No. Does North Korea seem like they're doing whatever the hell North Koreans want to do? That's a huge problem. So 
You need to know the North, uh, the Korean Peninsula splits on the 38th parallel into North Korea and South Korea. You need to know North Korea is going to fragment into communism. Okay, while well, South Korea is going to stay capitalistic. Okay. South is going to be called the Republic of Korea. The North is the People's Democratic Republic of Korea. Okay. The People's Democratic Republic of Korea, which is one of the most ironic terms. What about North Korea screams democratic? Or the people's democratic. How are the people in North Korea doing, people? One third of their population live in prison camps. You know that, right? Yeah, and the rest just live in pure horror. So, I don't know. Google it, man. All right, here we go. So, you need to know the United States will implement the Truman Doctrine and their containment. So, what does that mean? that the United States will implement the Truman Doctrine on, on Korea. What does that mean, Lauren? We're going to use it. What does that mean? We're going to go to war. There you go. So the United States is going to declare war. Why does the United States declare war? Is because North Korea is going to invade South Korea in 1950. Okay, so North Korea will invade South Korea in 1950. United States steps in on South Korea's side and pushes them back. Okay, you need to know on the other side, the Chinese are supporting the North Koreans while the Americans are supporting the South Koreans. Okay, you also need to write a star. Now, ladies and gentlemen, without, you don't have to write this part down. You're going to write something down in a second, which is why you're writing a star. Now, who helps the Chinese? The Russians. So who do you think are helping the Chinese fight in Korea? Russians. So you need to know the unnamed person in this conflict is Russia assisting China, who is fighting the Americans. Okay, so the Russians are assisting the Chinese who are fighting with the North Koreans who are fighting the Americans. Okay, you're going to put a second, put underneath it, put two stars. In direct conflicts between U.S. and the Soviets is how the Cold War will be fought. Indirect conflicts between the Soviets and the Americans is how the Cold War will be fought. So, ladies and gentlemen, are the Americans in Korea? Yes. Are the Chinese in Korea? Yes. Are the Soviets in Korea. Sort of. It's all their weapons. So all the weapons that are killing Americans were provided by the Soviets. Okay, so keep that in mind. So are the Soviets and the Americans fighting? Indirectly, yes. And that's how we're going to fight the war. Why aren't we going head to head with the Russians? Who can raise their hand and tell me why we're not going head to head? Jared. <laughs> It would be a hot war, yes. We already, people are dying. I mean, three million people are going to die in Korea. We have a ton of Americans who die in Korea as well, by the way. Why are we going head to head with the Russians, Evan? There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, put three stars. This is big information. Mutually assured destruction. 
mutually assured destruction. If America and the Soviets go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, if the Americans and the Soviets go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, hundreds of millions will die because of the weapon technology. If the United States and the Soviets go to war, hundreds of millions of people will die because of the technology. So both America and the Soviets avoid direct confra uh, conflicts. So, Korean War, big deal or little deal? Big deal, because it's the first time we're having... Uh, a proxy war. Next to where we had on the first bullet point where it says the Russians are <coughs> fighting with the Soviets, uh, Russians are fighting with the Americans in your first star at the end, right? Proxy war. That's what it's called. I couldn't come up with that term. It's called a proxy war. We're using other countries to fight. P-R-O-X-Y. Proxy war. It's called a proxy war. Okay. Underneath um, your stars, you're going to write there is no treaty that ends the Korean War, and the Americans technically lose it. There is no treaty that ends the Korean War, and the Americans technically lose the war. Now, today in 2020, ladies and gentlemen, who are our allies? South Korea, absolutely. By the way, we usually do these massive coordinated drills with South Korea, and they were canceled this year because of coronavirus. So they were supposed to happen like last couple weeks ago, maybe a week, two weeks ago. Uh, and we do that to show force in front of the North Koreans to show that we're still here, we're still influential, and we will blow them up if they cross that damn line. Yes? Okay, because there is no treaty. They just sit there and just stare at each other with guns. The most armed line in the world is the 38th parallel. Okay, there are more guns aimed in that one spot than anywhere else in the world. And at any moment, it can blow up. However, in the 38th parallel, it's literally a line. No one goes through it, because unless they're like sneaking out of North Carolina, uh, North Carolina, Jesus, North <laughs> Korea. Um, it happens to have the largest collection of endangered butterflies in the world. Yeah, so in other places in the world, butterflies have, these specific butterflies have died out, but not on the 38th parallel. They're thriving. Why? No one is bothering their uh, habitat. It is perfectly preserved. I mean, I guess if the war breaks out, they're gone in two seconds. But at the moment, it's been perfectly preserved since the 1950s. It's the only place where you can find the purple or blue uh, Vietnamese butterfly or some shit. On the 38th parallel. So, fun fact. The North Koreans are preserving butterflies. How wonderful. All right. Here we go. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, your next heading is a shift in policy, American shift in policy is your next heading. Okay, containment isn't working <laughs> from the Truman Doctrine. We've had two major countries now convert on top of a bunch of small countries. Containment isn't working from the Truman Doctrine. So Eisenhower, President, how do we know Eisenhower? What is Eisenhower's fame, claim to fame, Shannon? He was the organizer of D-Day, which is how he rose to fame, and of course, why he gets elected president. Eisenhower is our new president. Eisenhower starts this idea of domino theory. That is a new term for us, domino theory. He believes if one country falls to communism, they will all fall to communism. If one country falls, they will all fall to communism in the region.
Okay, you're going to put a star. This is significantly more extreme than containment. This is significantly more extreme than containment and will justify the use of nuclear technology if necessary. So ladies and gentlemen, are we becoming calm, cool, and collected, or are we starting to get pushed to the brink? We are getting pushed to the brink. We're so scared of communism. How are we feeling about communism today in 2020? Well, how do people talk about Bernie Sanders? They act like Bernie Sanders is like the end of the world. Do you agree? <coughs> like, oh my God, he's a socialist. <coughs> Whether you like Bernie or not, I'm not particularly a huge fan of Bernie, but people, are people today in 2020 okay with communism and socialism, or are we still scared of it? We're still scared, for sure, absolutely. Okay, you hear all these tiny, crazy things coming out, like, oh my God, if Bernie gets elected, then all this is going to happen. Okay, so we're still scared of it. So... You need to understand, containment is the first, it's done by Truman. The second round is called domino theory. It is much more extreme, and it will happily justify using nuclear technology. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bombed Nagasaki and Hiroshima with what type of bomb? Atomic. Atomic. <laughs> Apparently nuclear technology, and don't quote me on this, because like, I'm a history person. Nuclear technology is 10 to 20 times more powerful than atomic. So is that, uh, 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 is that a wonderful solution to this whole communist thing? I'm just going to kill more people more efficiently, I guess. So it becomes more extreme, and that is the big difference between domino theory and containment. Containment is scared. Domino theory is, oh, my God, we got to blow all these people up. It's a little scary, which is why it's going to push this conflict even into more tensions. Because now, nuclear bombings are on the table. So if they're on the table for the U.S., what about the Russians? Now keep in mind, oh, and you may want to put a star next to this, the Russians have nuclear technology. We were forced to give it to our allies post-World War II. So if we're putting nuclear, bom uh, nuclear bombs on the table as weapons, guess who else is putting it on the table? Yeah. So if we bomb a city, guess who's going to bomb us? The Russians. This is how it becomes the dangerous game, friends. That's why there's a bunch of, like, really great movies. Like, war games. It's a 1980s movie, so, like... Have you seen it, Sam? Oh, it's a great movie. Uh, would you agree? Well, at least someone's seen it. It's with uh, Matthew Broderick. Where is this belt? Can we agree? Hasn't it? Yeah, feels it's like it's... Nice. Well, that's... My clock's wrong. It's been wrong. Um, it's perfect. So, it's about how the... It's a game. It's fantastic. It's about how the Russians and the Americans almost blow each other up every day. Which we almost do. Every day. What do you got? Oh. <clears throat> Why? Why were they, like, forcing...